Hi students, uh, it's Luke D and I'm going to be talking about the Cancer Project today. Um, it's not as bad as most people make it out to be. I think it's kind of turned into a rite of passage for this class. So those that have done it in the past like to say that it's impossible to those that are about to do it. Anyway, let's talk about it. Uh, in general, this is the point of the class. I will design the entire class around this skill. The ability to take a cancer therapy that you see in a popular media um, or that you see somewhere and uh, get down to the data that gener or the data that you can evaluate. So in the future, I don't imagine that much of what you learn in this class is going to be that relevant. I imagine lots of things are going to change and you're going to need to do research on, on many, many different things. To hope that you would all be cancer re researchers is, is, um, is a lofty goal. So what I want you to be able to do is again the process of searching for the data and then evaluating the data, making a decision about the data, communicating that, um, and in the process of communicating that, also finding out problems with the data or downsides. So, in order to pick your project, what I wanted you to do is uh, access two things. Something that you're interested in, something that you have a lot of access to. For that second goal, the first thing I wanted you to do was build a network. The best resource in this cancer project, other than journal articles, is going to be a person that is actually connected to the therapy. So if you can find a person connected to the therapy, you're golden. You can call them, talk to them. I highly encourage you calling, emailing um, professors. If you have questions about how to do that, you can ask the IRT people, or you can ask me to look over an email before you send it out. If you email me, please remember to put a subject heading in your email. You're going to be spending about a month on this project, and as such, I wanted you to pick something that is meaningful to you. Uh, this is one of those projects where you have a great deal of flexibility in what you choose. So I would really, really rather you pick something that you're really interested in than something that fits easily within the project and um, that you really don't care about. So, um, if you have something that you find really interesting that you don't think quite fits within the project guidelines, go ahead and run it by me. I'm more inclined to let you do something like that as long as you've done a little bit of research and it's not totally wacky uh, therapy. As far as the timeline goes, there are going to be a few um, checkpoints. Uh, obviously, it was a dis assigned last Tuesday, uh, November 6th. Project approval is going to be this week. Um, we'll talk about that more in a second. And you must be ready to present on December 10th, 2012. Um, no matter when you present, you must be ready to present December 10th, 2012. That means your poster, your presentation, uh, that may all must be packaged and ready to go. Just as a note, you should really keep that for future use. This is something that you can put in your college application. Um, as an example or portfolio uh, as something that you have done that is science related. Not many students are doing things like this to the degree that you're doing them. Alright, so um, preliminary approval. Uh, that's basically going to be a con conversation between the four of us. Um, huh. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I'm basically going to sit down try to find out why you're doing the project, trying to find out if it matters, is it a real therapy? Does it have a real benefit? And is there data that you can use to evaluate it? Um, I'm not going to be asking you very much about whether the data is good, just if there is the data. And when I say data, I don't mean just on people. I don't want just data on it helps 70% of the people that take it. I want data on westerns. I want what proteins it's been affecting. I want what it does in rats and what it does in mice. That's the kind of information I want to see because that is going to be give a better idea as to what it's actually doing than its um, efficacy on human beings. The reason I'm asking you to predict, uh, pick two therapies when you come in is simply because you can get one shot down and I don't want you to have to start all over again on Tuesday. So if someone else has picked your project already or uh, you know I just don't see your therapy having a lot of available resources um, I will probably shoot it down. Oh, of course, if I don't think that you care about it and that you don't really want to do it, I'm also going to shoot it down. All right, as I said above, um, acceptable resources are basically anything. You may not use your 
cancer mentors or your um, class mentors for this project as far as information. You cannot say, hey, you know, Harrison, can I get uh, your data from your project? That's not going to fly. Um, what you can do is say, hey, I don't know where to find information. Can you give me some help? Uh, and they can help you with that. Again, the best source is going to be somebody that is connected directly to the project. When you're introducing yourself as a high school student taking this class, make sure you realize that they are probably not going to believe you when you say that you're doing um, the molecular side of this to the degree that you are, to the degree that you know it. So you have to kind of assume that they think you're exaggerating. Uh, you might want to provide some evidence that you know something. For example, when you're talking about a therapy, specifically discuss its involvement with a certain protein, uh, p53, p21, something like that and then uh, go on further discuss its the protein's actions. Um, I want to make sure that you have a good base of uh, resources so I want to make sure that you've included textbooks and journal articles. Um, those are going to be really textbooks for your general information and then the uh, journal articles for the data. Um, ACS websites or websites that's dedicated to a specific type of cancer or therapy are not going to be great further than kind of showing the human side of things. They're not designed for researchers um, and they're not designed for you or for this project. Um, the final part of the, or the, the finished product will be actually um, a few things. Uh, it's going to be a poster uh, that you're going to generate at, the best of each class will be printed on uh, our giant four-foot printer. Um, you are going to have to make a brief reading assignment, preferably actually a, a video that you can give out the night before your presentation. Uh, any information you have to give out, want to give out, must be contained within a page or about, you know, let's say under 10 minutes of uh, video. Um, the presentation itself is going to be about 10 minutes. Uh, one of the most important parts of the presentation is going to be the part right after that. Your ability to answer questions and control an audience to make sure that they don't run away. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know, or this is outside the scope of the research, if it is. Um, but I wouldn't go and say that about a lot of things, otherwise it's going to appear that you don't know anything. I would also make sure that you split up the responsibility of answering questions amongst the group members. So you may have one person to which all questions are directed who may hand out a question and say, you know, hey Roth Platts, can you answer this one? Um, one of the most important parts that is often missing is the conclusion or discussion of your therapy. That's going to come from the journal article and the rats. Uh, that's where you're going to say this is wrong or this is missing and you can't just say uh, it hasn't been done on humans yet so we don't know what it's going to do. There's going to be clearly a downside to every therapy. If there wasn't this therapy you would already know about it because it would be the biggest thing in cancer. Uh, so I want you to find out what that therapy is or what that downside is and explain it. The best way to go about doing that is by looking for people that have written articles against the therapy that you are um, explaining. Um, make sure that each member of the group contributes equally. If I find out that you're splitting up uh, the three, you know, the project into three parts, and that each of you are doing one part, I will, uh, I will find out basically in the question and discussion sections, and it will be bad for you. Um, Finally, make sure that the project center around the three overarching questions. That's going to be the crux of your presentation. What's the problem? What's the cancer? How many people does it affect? How does it hurt? Um, does it kill? Um, what's currently out there? What is the most popular effective therapy out there? So make sure that you discuss the most effective therapy, uh, most current effective therapy, because if you just give out some whack out, whacked out theory um, about something uh, and, and present that as what's being done now, I'll find out. Um, and then of course, what is new about your therapy? What does your therapy do
better than the one that is already there, and why is it better? Okay, so let's take a look at a um, presentation. Oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Okay, so this is an example of a poster. This is from two years ago, I believe. That's a uh, girl couch, a tag, and mini shock. Um, so you can see it's a pretty well organized poster, and I will give you this template, the banner here, uh, that you can write on. So basically, provide your title um, and then your authors. Uh, those will generally just go in alphabetical order, or if somebody has kind of taken the lead, you can put them in front. Um, the second most important part is acknowledgments or gratitude. Um, basically, the people that have helped you the most with those project with the project, make sure that you acknowledge them because this project is not something that you can do alone. You have to make sure that you acknowledge the people that help you. No scientist, no researcher stands alone. They always stand on the shoulders of others. Make sure you acknowledge those others. You can see how they've broken up the poster here, basically into an introduction section. Um, and then a kind of what our therapy is and what that means in the end uh, sections. So that's a pretty good breakup. You don't have to use four columns. You can use three or one. You don't have to use vertical columns. You can use left to right. But make sure that whatever you do, as far as the poster is concerned, you have thought about it. So if you think that three columns are better, make sure you have a reason for doing that. Parts of this poster that are missing, first of all, the conclusion or the discussion, uh, they don't actually provide a good deal of information as to what is wrong about their therapy. They also aren't providing a lot of data in here. You can see there's no fat rat. There's a lot of diagrams that explain the mechanism, how it works, and where the, uh, the problem is, but really there's no western, there's no uh, gel, there's no tumor reduction. Um, there is in humans, but again, I want the majority of the data I want from um, from journal articles, and that's probably not where they got this. Other than that, this poster is pretty good. It's pretty professionally done, um, and let me end on that note. Above all else, your poster, your presentation, and the homework must be professionally done. So I wouldn't do things like uh, I don't know, confetti or dances or songs, um, unless you think that that would actually be done in a professional presentation. Remember who you're presenting to, and you may actually be presenting to some version of this. A person that has the disease you're discussing, the mother of a person that has the disease that you're discussing, and a scientist working on that. So for the first two, I want you to, the compassion and the um, I, I want you to empathize with the first two and provide scientific evidence for the experimenter. Uh, that's about it. If you have any further questions on your cancer project, please don't hesitate to ask me in class. Otherwise, um, you should lean heavily on your mentor here. They spent a lot of time doing this project, and uh, they should be pretty willing to help you. If they're not, make sure you tell me, and I'll get you a new mentor. Have a great day, guys. Bye. I also don't know how to stop this. Oh, I really hope I was recording the whole time.